Tyreek Hill has gone up and over this number once in the last nine games. He's done it three times this year. He had five catches for 56 earlier against the Chargers. It is less the entire way. Welcome to Monkey Night Fights Thursday Night Football Coverage, folks. I'm Connor Antry. That's Fantasy Point's very own Joe Dolan. Joe, how are you today? Oh, guys, I've been uh, watching the uh, that show, What We Do in the Shadows. Have you heard of this? Yes, the it's vampire, a vampire one, comedy right? show. I feel yeah. like I look like that. <laughs> like, like I'm transitioning to being a vampire right the, now. The, the uh, 18 week season is real. Uh, it's just getting to you. No, it's. I mean, like it, it is. I know it's almost over, but oh man, and the COVID issues, and then and then and then uh, herbs gets <laughs> uh, get, gets gets kicked in the butt. Uh, that, he, he killed a guy. He kicked a guy. Yeah, he <laughs> kicked a guy. No, that's Brian Kelly. Um, uh, no, herbs, herbs, herbs. I don't think he has that on his uh, on his resume. But uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, the people in Jacksonville. Uh, I don't think it's going to change a whole lot for fantasy with three games left. But uh, I'm going to I'm going to say here that uh, the 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 folks in Jacksonville are probably very happy about this. The players in Jacksonville are very happy about this. I know how much it just a coach who the entire team just utterly hates can bring the whole thing down. So. Um, obviously they needed to do this. They, that, that had to be done. Yeah, no, going around kicking players, partying at, well, college bars. I mean, not really the best leader for a bunch of men trying to win a national champ, or well, not even a nat- like an international championship, winning a Super Bowl, one of the hardest trophies to win in all of sports. Yeah, not a good look, Joe. Not a good look, but hey, something that we have tonight, two good-looking offenses. You got the Chargers going against the uh, the Chiefs, man. Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, we saw what they did in week three. What an awesome showing that was with the Chargers coming out on top. And, man, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, on the other hand, though, his only multi-touchdown performance in the last eight weeks has come against the Raiders. Yeah. Coincidentally, those are also the only games in which he's had 100-plus QB rating. So can he get it done against a team that's not in black and gold and a team that's giving up just 207.3 yards per game that's ranking fourth in the league? His, uh, his line right now, Joe, coming in at right around 287.5 passing yards. Yeah. Did open up at 289, down two yards. Both these guys opened up at 289. Herbert's holding steady. But uh, let's talk about Mahomes first, obviously. What, what's, like, we've been kind of, is he back? Is he not back? We've been breaking it down earlier this year. He thought he was kind of gunslinging it and taking unnecessary risks. But... It really seems like this is the make or break. Patrick Mahomes, AFC West leader, like yeah. whoever wins this game is going to be atop the AFC West going into next week. I feel like this is the game where he's got to come back, but I actually see the less here. Oh, I totally agree. As a matter of fact, I think this number's way too high. Uh, Mike Clay of ESPN pointed out that um, the Chiefs have scored uh, 40 uh, points or more in basically uh, two of their last, like, uh, ten games, okay? They faced two high safeties less than 40% of the time in just two of those games, both against the Raiders. Mm. So the Raiders are not playing what has been kind of the the, uh, Patrick Mahomes uh, kryptonite this year. The Chargers play two high safeties as their base, okay? Derwin James is a game-time decision but could play, which would be huge for the for the Chargers. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I think Patrick Mahomes is back after he – and by the way, I mean, look, he played extremely well against the Raiders, okay? He went 20-24, and but the Chiefs' defense was the huge factor in that game. Of course, five turnovers, including a fumble six on the first play of the game. I'm taking the less on Patrick Mahomes here because all the evidence has been that unless he's facing – when he's facing those two high safety looks, including – earlier this season against the Chargers when he threw for 260 and two and had two interceptions that he's going to struggle and um, you know Pat, uh, Tyree Kill and, and Travis Kelsey have combined for 12 catches over the last two games there's not a like and but the Chargers by the way still have the worst run defense by football outsiders DVOA in the league the Chiefs running backs uh, had four touchdowns last week so I actually think the Chiefs are going to come out and run it I think all the evidence points to Patrick Mahomes going less than this number and I think I'm going to take it sooner rather than later Connor because you had just said that it's going to come down I still like it where it is or that it had been coming down still like it where it is but all the evidence points to 
the, this being less. Now, you could just say, other than that, oh, he's Patrick Mahomes. All right, he's Patrick Mahomes. Okay, well, that's the evidence pointing to the more. Yeah, well, he was I'm also Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I agree with you, Joe, but for all those people that are giving that argument, he's Patrick Mahomes. He was also Patrick Mahomes heading into the last year's Super Bowl. We know what happened there. Another thing to note is Joey Bosa's heating up. I mean, Joey Bosa, he's got eight and a half sacks this year, and the Chargers lead the NFL with nine strip sacks. Mahomes was sacked three times last week, and the Chiefs O-line's been pretty good this season overall, but three sacks last week, so the pressure's going to be there, and I'm glad you brought up that run attack because that's how – you kind of get those D linemen to say, okay, we got to secure the edge. Patrick Mahomes, what happens if he gets outside, extends the pocket, Tyreek Hill gets open downfield. But if they get after Mahomes early, this could be really bad for the Chargers. So just a one more note on why I wanted to hammer the less on Mahomes. And then on the other side of the football, Justin Herbert's averaging nearly 320 passing yards and three touchdowns a game over the last four weeks. He's get He gets a KCD who's given up the seventh most pass yards per game in the NFL. He's the first ever player to throw 30 plus touchdowns in his first two seasons. Like, did I mention that he threw four touchdowns in week three against the Chiefs? Yeah. Actually, if they no, come he out with that, for 281 in that game, by the way. But. Yeah, I know, but still four scores. But at the end of the day, 281, not bad. When his line's 289, I think he can add another 10 yards to that, especially if they go out and they did what they did in week three against the Chiefs, which was really attack them, not give them any kind of space to get settled in because that Chiefs defense has been. Ste- they've stepped up lately, no doubt. Their D line has stepped up, but if Herbert can go back three uh, three step drops, get the ball out of his hand in less than two seconds, with Keenan Allen back in the lineup, I really like the more here. Yeah, Keenan Allen's back in the lineup, and I mean, unfortunately, um, the Chiefs will not have slot corner with Jerry Sneed for the second straight game. Sneed's brother was tragically killed uh, last week, okay. and uh, he is in the process of returning to the team, but won't be there. And I mean, it's just sickening that we have to bring that up. But, I mean, obviously the Chargers are getting their slot receiver back. I I mean, and the Chiefs are doing the right thing. They'd rather lose this game because of that than get than than force Legereus need to play. But, I mean, I I think I like them more on Justin Herbert in this game. He's playing out of his mind. Um, I think right now the MVP of the league is Tom Brady. Justin Herbert, if he wants to make a push for that, and I'm not sure how much – um, I'm not sure how much that's uh, that's in his mind right now, but if he wants to make a push for that award on Thursday night in an island game, probably the premier Thursday night football game of the entire year, lighting up the Chiefs, that'll do it. That'll do it. That's when you'll get the articles. Is Justin Herbert the MVP? I think he does it tonight. I think those think pieces are coming starting tomorrow. You think that Tom Brady's playing MVP football over Jonathan Taylor? Uh, yes. Really? But like, and I, I think, I mostly think that voters will vote for a quarterback before they vote for a running back. And, and um, fair point. I, I love, I love when people vote for running backs for MVP because it just really makes people pissed off, and that's always great. <laughs> can't vote for a running back. Well, I think, I think the the compromise is it'll be the quarterback for the MVP, and Jonathan Taylor's going to win Offensive Player of the Year. That's what I think. Yeah, Jonathan, what, what Jonathan Taylor's been doing over the last five, six weeks is absolutely incredible, like averaging over 100 rush yards, averaging almost two touchdowns per game, like crazy. But getting back to this matchup now, you kind of mentioned his name earlier, Tyreek Hill. Ugh. He's slowed down as of late as Mahomes is spreading the ball around. We saw Flash Gordon get into the end zone last week. Hey, welcome back to the NFL, Josh. Um, lay off the weed, <laughs> Benet would say. And, uh, yeah, I think Hill's line at 84 and a half yards is – it's interesting. Like, dang, he can do it on three receptions. Like we saw last week. He had only four grabs last week for 76 yards. The week before, two grabs for 22 yards. I just think with the way they're spreading out the, the ball around on offense and the lack of – the lack of ownership that Mahomes is taking on this offense and control this offense, I'm going to have to take the less on Tyreek Hill – for the game script that I'm uh, that I'm projecting a high run offense for the Chiefs, the clock keeps rolling, and Hill doesn't get uh, doesn't get the seven to doesn't get the double digit targets that we're used to seeing. Back to four or five targets this week. Let's 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 look at the evidence. And this is the same thing with Mahomes. Tyreek Hill has gone up and over this number once in the last nine games. He's done it three times this year. He had five catches for fifty six earlier against the Chargers. It is less 
the entire way. And I'm just talking evidence. I understand he can do this in one play, okay? You bust one coverage, Tyreek Hill goes up, uh, up and over this number. He's done it once in his last nine games. He didn't even do it against the Raiders in you know, either of the two games. Less Tyreek Hill. Yeah, I, I like. Yeah, you, 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 you got it. You, you got it. You got it. Let's talk about Travis Kelsey now. Another guy that seems to be of slowing down as of late, but a target over the middle. I feel like those quick shots could be there against this Chargers team. We've seen it earlier in the season, but again, 69 and a half yards. So we need 70 yards. I'll take the more on that because I do think Mahomes will be able to find his big tight end. I like Travis Kelsey. I think he's a, He's one of those guys that you go looking for when things are tough, and I can see this game getting tough. So if that goes up any more, though, I'm really uncomfortable. I'd be, yeah. I would like Travis Kelsey at 65 yards. Even at 70 yards, I'm like, I want to take the more because of the Travis Kelsey effect that you just said with Tyreek Hill because it's Travis Kelsey. But I feel like the 60-yard is the comfortable area. But I, I, I will take the more on this one, Joe, just because somebody's got to catch these passes eventually. Uh, in a weird kind of a trend here, Travis Kelsey has exactly 27 receiving yards in three of his last six games. Now, in the other three games, he's gone 68, which is basically right at this number, 119, 74. He's had more, he's had a lot more volatility than we're used to seeing from Travis Kelsey. He did put 104 on the Chargers earlier this year. I like the more on Travis Kelsey. There's much more evidence to taking the more on Kelsey than there is to taking it on Tyreek Kill. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was alluding to was the over 100 yard performance earlier this season against LA with the with the way that they were able to exploit that matchup. And then on the other side of the football, you have Austin Eckler. He can beat you on the ground and he can beat you out of the backfield as a receiver. Joe, I'm going to bounce two numbers off of here. 60.5 rushing yards and 4.5 receptions. Which one do you like more? I like the reception line. I think I, I think do that's... too because the Chiefs do not have linebacker Willie really Gay because of COVID. And I think he was critical to their plans to slowing him down. And Eckler's coming into this game dinged up, man. I, I'm not thrilled with either one of them, but... This one, um, I think the receptions is better. I think that's how we'll choose to attack. Yeah. On the rushing side, though, I mean, it is a favorable matchup. He rushed for 5.6 yards per carry last week. And Kansas City's bottom six in yards per carry given up this season. So there is the, 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 the opportunity on the ground is there. I just, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You have Justin Herbert. You're running that offense. You get Allen back. You mentioned how the coverage for the KC Chiefs isn't going to be their top guns. It's next guy up football situation. Although Kansas City is giving up over 109 rush yards per game, I do like Eckler to be the X factor in this performance out of the backfield in the receiving role as well. So I'll take the more on that and just the rushing line at 60 yards, that's tough for me. I I think I might just stay away from that one. I think I'd lean to the more because I think they are really pushing Eckler to play in this game, but the injury is, is concerning me. Well, one though, here's one that I wanted to note for you, Joe. This is this is just a rapid fire contest that's currently live on Monkey Knife Fight, right? Yeah. And I love these rapid fire contests. I know that some of the people comment on these videos are like, yeah, give it mix it up a bit. Give us some rapid fire contests. So here's a rapid fire contest for y'all on a little Thursday night football primetime action. Justin Herbert versus Pat Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes only has two and a half yards in hand. I'm gonna take Herbert. Yeah. Here's the receiving matchup. Tyreek Hill versus Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen has five and a half yards in hand. Oh, I'm gonna, Allen, easily for me. I mean, this might be my favorite r- rapid fire. Folks, the, it's three times you're buying. A hundred bucks to take I'm getting, home. I'm getting right to my phone right after the <laughs> show, man. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I really don't know what to say about that. You know, I always try to go through and find a nice bet for you guys. If not, we just break down the show. But that's one of the ones where you should... Um, Hit it hard, as, as I like to say. Let's uh, One more name that we have to talk about in the reception line, though, Joe, uh, just from the rundown here is Keenan Allen. Seven, His line is seven and a half receptions. Does he come back 
and have an emphatic showing in his return. What, what's your read on Keenan Allen for Thursday Night Football? I really like the matchup for Keenan Allen. So, yes, I'm going to take the more on this, even though this seems super high. Seven and a half receptions is a lot. But I'm going to take the more. I don't know if I, I don't know if this is one that I'd be entering a contest with. But if, uh, for the sake of argument here on the program, I'm going to take the more on Keenan Allen for the reasons I outlined earlier, which are kind of gross. But, I mean, that's the reality of the situation. Yeah, he's had at least seven receptions in uh, one, two, three, four of his last five games and at least eight targets in uh, six straight games. So he, he's getting the target share. The volume's been there when he's been healthy, and I'm, I'm right with you there, Joe Dolan. Obviously, we got a fun one tonight. I think the over is 52 points right now. Uh, two rush defenses that aren't great. You got two quarterbacks that are pretty solid. Uh, I'll start... Before I throw the projection to you, I'm going to take the over first. Uh, first on and foremost, Joe, uh, what's what's your projection for tonight's game? Over, and I think it's going to be um, a pretty freaking entertaining game. And I think I think this is going to be Justin Herbert's real coming out party here. Wow! Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I, I'm expecting to. I have a I have a signed Herbert rookie jersey from last season that I just was like, oh, I saw it at an auction site, and I was like, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll grab that. I might wear it tonight. Give myself a little good good vibes. I like the, I really like Justin Herbert in this spot. Uh, I've been high on him out of Oregon. I think the Bears should have made a move for him. I said that on a podcast years ago on a Bears podcast. But, hey, here we are. Chargers are flying. And I think they're going to leave in first place tonight. I really do. I think it's a Chargers night. I think the Chargers are going to win this game. And I think they're going to win it 31-27. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Like, All right. I think the Chargers are going to win, too. And, and I think... You know, uh, this could be, it's either going to be, you're going to get two stories coming out of this game. It's either going to be Justin Herbert's the MVP or Patrick Mahomes is back and the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. That's that, Those are the those are the two angles that are going to come out of this game. I really don't expect this to be a crappy game. Like, uh, I mean, the Chiefs have, have played in some surprising crappy games this year. I don't think this is going to be one of them. Yeah, no, I, I really, it just, it, it just looks like it's going to be, so much fun to watch, so much fun to be a part of. Joe, thank you so much for joining us today on Monkey Knife Fight. Any final thoughts on players to watch going into tonight? Any little any little tidbits you can give to the, the listeners tuning in right now? Yeah, um, I'm going to be interested to see what Mike Williams' role is with, uh, with Keenan Allen back. I'm also going to be interested to see Josh Palmer's role because he did a great job ste- stepping in for Allen in the slot last week. But are they just going to just demote him again? Obviously, Keenan Allen's a stud, so Josh Palmer's not going to take his role. Or are we going to see more snaps from him? Uh, the, the Chargers have a lot of talent in that receiving core. Here's one uh, name that I just want to throw up. If you guys are struggling with receiving core like myself, I just lost Jarvin Slandry to COVID. I lost OBJ to COVID for my first weekend in playoffs. Jalen Guyton, three grabs on three targets last week for 87 yards in the TD. Yes, Allen's back in the lineup, but hey. He's had back-to-back pretty solid performances. Yeah, I don't think his role changes. Josh Palmer's role changes. I think uh, I think that Casey's susceptible to the deep shot, so I think Guyton may be a, a guy to look for. Uh, might be uh, if you need some help in fantasy, if you're dealing with COVID issues like myself. I, I picked up Guyton and I'm starting him tonight in fantasy, folks. Uh, all the money, all the marbles on the line. Joe, what do you think about that hot start tonight? Uh, I think I think it's uh, entirely possible that we're gonna we're gonna see a them coming out early going down the field uh I'm, I'm looking forward to this one guys i i know the season's been long and it's turning me into a vampire but this this is why we do this because of games like this and actually getting an island game like this which i love to watch what was the reference earlier what we do in the shadows moments yes. go dolan yeah. what we do in the shadows starring joe dolan and connor around wait for week 18 folks we're gonna be zombies Thank you guys so much for joining us today on Monkey Night Fight. I'm Connor Roundtree. That's Fancy Points' very own Joe Dole. Make sure you check out his stuff. And remember to hit that rapid fire line and to hit everything you do nice and hard.